Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, we're back on this 311 cubic inch small block Chevy. It's based on the 302. It's going to be a high winding little ripper of an engine that's going in my nostalgia front engine dragster. In a video, I showed you installing the crankshaft and setting the thrust on the back. However, I didn't really explain um, in depth on checking the end plate. So in this video, I'm going to walk back through and show you how to set the thrust on this and check your end plate. That's really important because on these cars, um, with your transmission in place, whether it be an automatic or a manual transmission, there is a load on the transmission that pushes forward on this. And if you noticed on the back here, we did have the thrust bearings installed, and you want to make sure that is set correctly. Um, reason being is you don't want too much play in there and your crank get into those bearings and chew it up. That could kill your engine. So this video is going to be quick. It's going to show you how to set your thrust bearing, how to check your end play, and to see if you're all right. With that, guys, let's get started. Okay, so first off, what you're gonna need to do, you're gonna need to make sure everything is installed but not yet torqued down. You're gonna actually wanna do this somewhat loose. Um, what uh, kind of a general rule of thumb is once you get your main caps in place and everything installed and lubricated, you want these to be about 10, 15, 20 foot pounds of torque somewhere in there. And from there, what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna use a mallet. And back here on the crankshaft flange, we're actually gonna knock that forward. And what that does on your um, rear main bearing on your thrust bearing, it actually sets those where it needs to be. So you just want to go ahead and tap that forward a few times like that. And we're going to call that good. The next step on this is going to be torque your mains in place. Remember, these are going to 70 foot pounds and three equal steps. So I'm going to go 25, 50, and 70. Okay, and this next step, what you're going to need is you're going to need a magnetic base with a, a dial indicator, and it needs to be adjustable. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the front of the engine block and align it with this snout. I've already set this one up for saving a little bit of time, but you're going to find a flat surface, and what you're going to do is you're going to make sure everything's square with the world, and you're going to put it on the edge of that crankshaft snout. Then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find yourself a good nice prying device because what we're going to do is we're going to pry now the crank all the way back be careful you don't get in there into a machine surface um, you need to find something usually between a cap and what you're going to do is you're going to get in there and you're just going to pry that crankshaft all the way back as far as it'll go then what you're going to do is you're going to zero your gauge out on here All right, got that zeroed. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually pry the crankshaft forward. What I wanna do is I want to show you on the edge of that what our clearance is gonna be. All right, so if you looked here, what I ended up doing was is I pried the crank in the backwards position. And then from there, what I did was I took the dial indicator off the snout of the crankshaft and I zeroed that out. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in that same prying position and I'm gonna pry forward to get our crankshaft in play. So right there, each tick mark is a thousandths. I'm at six thousandths of crankshaft in play. On this crank here, from everything I've read for specs, you need to be within three thousandths and eleven thousandths. So I'm pretty much dead right in the middle. So yeah, that's how you check your crank snout in play. All right, well, there you have it. That's how you can check the end play of your crankshaft. Like I said, it's very important because the last thing you want to do is not have proper end play on this, destroy some bearings, run a bunch of metal in your engine, and ruin it. So this is a crucial step because your crankshaft does take a lot of abuse. Um, one thing with this, guys, if you find out that your clearance is too tight, what you can do is you can take your thrust bearings out, you can put the halves together, take like a stainless steel clamp, and like a, a round, like almost like a hose clamp and tighten that down so it replicates it being together in there. 
And from there, what you do, you're going to measure the width of your thrust bearing itself. And after you measured, so let's say that width is two inch, three thousandths, and you got your clearance and you need to take another three thousandths off. Well, you'll know what you need to take off that. Um, what you can do then is take that flat on a flat surface with like a 400 grit sandpaper, like wet or dry, and lightly sand each side. Um, I always like to do on each side equal. Sand that down, measure a little bit, sand, measure, so you can reduce the width of your thrust bearing to compensate for the lack of clearance. Obviously, you want to make sure you clean that when you're done, put it back together, and check it again. But it, just because your clearance is too tight doesn't mean you have to go get new bearings. You can actually fix it yourself with, like I said, like a stainless steel hose clamp, some 400, 600 grit sandpaper, some calipers, and a little bit of time. But do take your time because you can take off too much, and then that's going to be a problem in itself too. So yeah, that's how you can do it. It's pretty simple. Um, tools needed. Well, like I showed you a mallet, you're going to need a dial indicator with an adjustable magnetic base and a pry bar. Doesn't take a whole lot of time. And this is a crucial me measurement you want to take. So what's next, guys? Well, we have a whole lot coming up with this 311 cubic inch small block Chevy. I'm going to be checking piston ring clearance on here for end gap. I'm going to be putting together the rods and pistons so we can get these things poked in the hole. With that being said, I am doing a lot of videos on this engine build, kind of step by step by step by step. I want to cover everything for you guys maybe learning how to build an engine. Um, I'm still learning a lot of this. Jimmy's taught me a lot, which I'm thankful for, and I just want to pass that information on. I know everyone has their own way. This is the way I've been taught, and if you have any questions or anything, leave a comment. I'll be sure I can follow up on it. So with that, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to end it there. And in the next one, we're going to start working on those pistons and rings so we can get those bad boys poked in the hole and start buttoning up this engine. Two Hacks Garage, we'll see you in the next one.